Hey guys, here's the gear for today. I've used my fader in a little while, fan shaped. Um, the knot is fan and it is the, I think this is the one weird company that calls it a two band silver tip. So it's probably just, a, I, to me, I, it's just a two band. Um, it's not really a silver tip. It doesn't resemble many of the silver tips. It's got the backbone of a two band and the, the tips of a two band. So, um, slant open comb from Fatip with the piccolo style handle. And I'm going to put a feather in it. It's had two uses already. So the initial roughness that sometimes comes as that first use should be gone. I'm curious to see how it works in this razor. And then I am trying for the first time Chella, the bio, the organic puck that they have. It's in this blue container. It's a much more light white type color than the yellowish of the other one, of the regular one that they've had going for so long. This is a substantial little container, kind of compact, 150 milliliters, 5.2 ounces. And we'll just see what this bio formula, it says all aloe vera right there, but I think it's Italian. And it, it looks like it's got a, like an apostrophe after the all. And so it might not be the word all in English. It's probably some type of Italian construction there. So I don't know exactly what that, what that means. But I have scooped up a little bit more than a quarter teaspoon of that here in the quarter teaspoon scoop. And so let's, before I get my hands all soapy, let's work with the blade here. I used this twice with the ASD2, and that razor will definitely be coming back to the channel here soon. See how close it came to getting right the first time. It's pretty good. Didn't take too long. Get my brush back in the water before we start working. These tips definitely benefit from a few minutes. I've got my jigger of 40 milliliters of water here to add to the lather as we go. Uh, since it's an organic soap, they're, I mean, surely, surely they spent a while in research and development and are going to bring something to the table that isn't competitive, right? So hopefully it's going to be a, an organic soap that excels, that does a decent job. It's not an expensive soap uh, over in Europe, and so uh, I think one should judge it that way. Judge it like a soap that doesn't really cost all that much. Uh, it's one of the soaps that I got recently with an order from Connaught Shaving over in the UK, buying things like the Leah Cream, the Perrazzo Super Formula that I recently used are much cheaper on the European market where they're made. got a little bit of a grainy appearance. You may not be able to see it because my the selfie camera that I have to use on my cell phone on this particular model phone does not focus when objects are close up. It's the one weakness of this phone one thing about it that I wish wasn't that way. Everything else is an improvement over the other one that I used to have for a while. Now this is 
easily spreading. It is a crope. It's it's not a cream. Strictly speaking, it it does push and spread around. It doesn't you know stick to my finger uh, like a real cream does, and so it is a crope. It's a soft crope. All right. Let me get my face wet. We can start loading up. You can see my hair sticking out a little bit today. I got out of the shower and just kind of let it air dry. It's just kind of what happens. Shake a lot of the water out of here. This is not a super high density knot and so it does hold a good bit of water and does have some, uh, some nice room between the bristles for soap and good flow through, that sort of thing. Pleasant scent coming up. I guess aloe vera should be kind of in there somewhere, right? Don't really know how to describe it. It's not musky. It's not floral. Didn't have very much scent at all from the dry tub, and so the water is waking up the scent a little bit. This is a nice knot. I like the backbone of it in that it's uh, truly kind of medium, uh, easy to splay, but this handle is kind of a chubby handle, basically, and so my fingers always get a big old mess when I use it. day of growth, I think. On the beard today. some elasticity here still holding on to its shape a little bit some things to look for as you figure out where your favorite place to stop adding water is spoons in the lather so far. I think we're getting really close to stopping point. The regular red tub of Sella is not one that I usually take 
to a really wet elastic point. It's kind of old school and so it needs to still ha have a little bit of that structure. I don't need to th take it too far. I work it until it's just a little drier than I might normally stop. This looks really nice. The surface is nice smooth creamy texture. So let's just give this a shot the way it is here. Rinse my face. All right, so we're ready to ready to go. Organic ingredients are not all that important to me, but it is nice to have that option for those to whom it is a priority. As you can see, we're getting kind of chunks flying off. And when you get stuff with some shape flying off, then sometimes that means that you need more water. A lot of that water kind of was wasted. This jigger kind of doesn't do adding water in small drips very well. This lather feels very nice. Nice creamy texture to it. Yeah, of course it doesn't have that great cherry smell, but it feels very slick. Got a nice resonant slickness to it as you're moving your fingers around. You don't feel like you're pushing the slickness around. You you feel like that that slickness continues to, to stay where, where you put it. Yeah, this needs some more water. That. So, what do we do? Maybe try just to put in a little bit this time instead of as much as I did before. Lots of lather generated, which is encouraging because that's a quarter, a little over a quarter teaspoon, and I'm going to end up with a lot of lather. And that's nice with the softer creams, with the softer soaps. Sometimes you don't get as much mileage out of a tub. But it looks like this formulation is, is really kind of concentrated. And you're going to get your good value for your money number of shades, you know. So this doesn't have too much to offer the shaver in terms of scent, but its whole focus is organic. So they're not going to put any fragrance oils and things like that in there, right? So a person who is focused on purchasing organic is probably already lowered their priorities in the scent department, right? All right, feather. Use number three on the blade. Let's see how it works in this slant with the open comb plate, the teep. And with this razor, what I've experienced so far as I've tried an Astra and a Gillette Silver Blue is that sometimes it cuts firmly and consistently in a way that gives you a nice close cut and sometimes it's it's still firm and consistent but it just doesn't seem to to get into the right places and so we'll just see how it ends up today oh now that feels I'm not getting any tugging it's moving easily through the hair
with this exposure, a little bit of aggressiveness here, I wonder if I should focus on not buffing, not repeating the same areas. Although I kind of think I need to do it on that area right here. Of course, I think I hit it with a first time with the wrong angle. So I'm getting a, this is the feather, and I'm getting a pretty good reaction, pretty good face feel this first time. This razor has, with certain blades, given me a stealthy buildup of tenderness. Not really any irritation. Tenderness. I'm very happy with the slickness of this soap. Now, because that first pass was was quite concentrated, and I needed to add a good bit of water to it, went ahead and poured some more water in the bowl here. So let's get that into a nice even mixture here. really nice. I am pretty sure that I've had lathers with the original that weren't this nice. Now maybe those were lathers where I pushed it a little too far with water or you know, was testing it out or something. I, I haven't used it recently to kind of have a really good base of comparison. This is very nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was much better. Added that water. I'm getting some, still getting some little jumpers, but you see they're smaller. Good, looks good. Cross grain now. So the feather is not showing a nasty personality yet. I have a feeling if it does, it's just going to be because of light buildup over the course of the passes. light buildup of irritation. Light hold on the razor. As always, let it just glide over your skin. In the rinses, there's a certain amount of creaminess that, that stays resident. It just doesn't immediately flush everything away. Uh, to me, that feels good. I like that. But it doesn't take forever to, to get a decent rinse. Uh, so I'm really happy with it so far. You know, if I had to try to pinpoint a scent, it might be a very light version of those, the blue type scents, like Aqua Velva. But it's very light, very light, but pleasant. And yeah, I've got another three passes in there easily. So that will go far, that little tub will go far. And I ended up using 26 
milliliters of water, a little over five teaspoons. Now let's shave off this third pass. See how this feather is going to make things happen. Petite razors are a really good value because they are all brass and then they're plated in either chrome or nickel. And so they will last multiple lifetimes, unlike the Mercours, Parkers, Jaggers, and Muleys, and all the DE-89 clones out there that are they may be shipping with a stainless steel handle but, or brass handle, but usually the head is zinc alloy. And there we go. That is three passes. And let's add a little touch-up guy. I do feel like I need to be careful and not overshave. So let's stop right there and we'll check out that level of closeness. I still see a little bit of length in several tips in this area. So let's just see if another attack can be done without summoning razor rash. You guys, I envy the way you can do that against the grain pass at the end. You just nail it, you know. But my skin just won't won't work with that. I didn't clear up enough of those little tips as I wanted. But it's still a pretty good shave. Uh, several tips have just a little bit of length on them, so it just proves that the feather isn't some kind of miracle blade. Uh, and it didn't rough me up. I've got very nice comfort everywhere else. Here I do feel just a little tenderness because I had to work that area more than the other areas. Uh, and so it feather looks like it might be a, uh, about as good as I'm going to get. Um, with this razor, of course, I can try others. Uh, Nasset, Kai, those are ones that could be of interest. Um, they could have uh, certain angles and traits that might match this, this razor. Again, if you can go against the grain, I bet that just fixes everything for you and cuts the hairs in the right way to give you something uh, with a nice, nice closeness to it. So the soap, I didn't expect it to be as nice as it was. Very enjoyable. Now the, it doesn't have too much in terms of ingredients. They haven't listed anything. How can they get away with doing that? Usually the ingredients are on the bottom here. Um, maybe because they're on the box. I'll have to check out the box. Ingredients aren't that really that important to me, but Sometimes I like to just learn and see what's, what's on things. I have a old, few years old now, lathering wood balm, and it's the sandalwood scent. And back then I, I enjoyed a couple of the soaps I got from them. They perform pretty well, and the sandalwood is a nice, realistic, authentic kind of sandalwood. use up the balm before it goes bad. I'm 
and spoil because you can buy shaving soaps and they'll last for years. And so I haven't regretted having a big collection of them. But I've got enough balms now and enough post-shave products where I need to start either selling stuff off or using it because the balms are, are not indefinite in shelf life. The woodiness, the sandalwood there is not really a great match for that kind of blueness, the very light scent of the, of the soap. But I enjoy it anyway. The soap is so light that you can really use anything with it. But those two scents are kind of on opposite ends of the, uh, not matching ends of the spectrum, the scent spectrum, if there is such a thing. So this razor is more aggressive than the slant with the closed comb plate. But it still seems to It seems to be aggressive in some spots, but not aggressive in other spots. I can take a normal BE, a normal, even, even the normal Fatipes, the Grande, the open comb, or the closed comb, and get, uh, and I never get a place where I feel the, the tenderness like I do in certain spots with this razor, but then I get the same or better results right here. So it's, it's, a little perplexing. Usually if you get a little more blade feel, a little bit more exposure, then sometimes that's a reward. A, uh, something that comes along with that is the close cut. But that just doesn't seem to be as much the case. I get a nice cut on my cheeks and over here on my neck, but right here it's just leaving some spots out. Now sometimes an aggressive razor will cause that those uh, patches and, and some length there to remain because I feel like I don't want to cause any irritation and so I change my technique or I don't do as many touch-up passes or you know something like that that wasn't the case with this shave and uh, it wasn't that aggressive I only have a little tenderness feeling right now but in general the comfort during the shave was really pretty nice and so that wasn't happening this time and so it's a uh, it's kind of a little puzzling but it's in, in all cases I've got a decent shave I don't think it would be hard for me to to find a blade that regularly gives me uh, shaves that I'm happy with maybe a little bit of length left and a few tips in my trouble spot but even a lot of the DEs will will still leave me with that as well and then of course like I keep saying if you can put uh, and against the grain pass into your mix, then I got a feeling that would just end you up in a really sweet spot. So I think it's a good slant uh, for most folks. And yes, about 27 milliliters of water, a little over a quarter teaspoon of soap, and, uh, and I ended up with six or seven passes of lather. So that is a nice... A nice conservation of soap economical you know soap good return on your investment let's put it that way all right guys I think we're in good shape that was a uh, big surprise with that soap sometimes when they make something vegan or make something organic they end up having to lose something that's important to the function of that thing and and, and with this soap i thought that the lather would suffer a little bit it wouldn't be as as creamy i was wrong uh, to my recollection the original red tub of sulla of cella is has not has been either this good or not quite as good of course there's some variation for like i said for me playing around with the lathers and that sort of thing but uh, this is this was nice and it held water well. It wasn't a dry lather. It uh, gave me a nice slick film on my face, a slick surface. It felt great on the fingers. It felt creamy in the rinses. It was that hydrated. You saw the way it acted in the bowl, but it still had a creamy texture to the fingers. 
uh, and it, uh, but it didn't linger too long on the face during the rinses. It just, you know, took just a little bit and then you're, you've been cleaned off and uh, a nice balance there. I, I, I'm impressed. Um, so there we go. And it was a uh, very enjoyable to use the, the fader here. These tips are not as soft as most silver tips. And so I think they really need to drop the silver tip from the, from the name. If this is that one, you can look in the description, uh, to see, I've put it in there, uh, to see if they call this one, the two band silver tip. I believe they do, but, uh, it's just a two band and the tips are not as soft as most silver tips out there. Um, they're probably it's just marketing, right? All right. Well, great news. Great shave from puffy headed sugar daddy this time. And, uh, I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed it. Got something from it, helped you out in some way. Uh, time to go to sleep. Take care. Have a good night. Bye-bye.